Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm going to check out the new update to the Kolimata Concorde. This is version 2. It is a major update and it costed me an extra $5 even though I already own the thing but uh, I guess it is a substantial update and we will see uh, how that goes. Apparently there's ground effect and all sorts of other goodies like more in the fuel management. I'm not gonna do everything. I'm not gonna use all the features. I really just need to check how it works and get a handle on it prior to flying it as part of my Around the World in 80 Planes series and this would be the next plane I fly in X-Plane 11. So that is Flight 6 and I'll be flying it across the Atlantic though not from the normal locations. So yes, I just wanted to make sure that everything was all right with it and so we're taking a look around and it's just uh, a way I fly it kind of functionality. So our flight is going to be from Miami to JFK. Very short flight uh, to check things out and you can see you can enter uh, airport code there and add it as a waypoint. That's how I do waypoints with this plane. And we have the payload manager, fuel manager, and there's the flight plan. So we know what we need. And Aircraft, you can see our range estimate is fine, though we're burning some right now, of course. Uh, fuel, engine, center of gravity, normal stuff, doors. This is all familiar from the previous times that I used it. Um, SIVA. Well, we could do something with that, but... The flight engineer, well, we'll trim for takeoff. I'll make sure to change that as we go along. So the whole full startup procedure can work with this plane. I did that even in version 1 and you would need to go back there to access the flight engineer panel to do that. And there are handy little tabs on the bottom corner here that allow you to switch. Oh, I don't have my cursor there. The bottom left corner, there are a little gray, there's a little gray area there with a lot of little rectangles that indicates the locations around the cockpit that you can jump to. So if you're not familiar with this plane, that's how it works. Anyway, let me see if I can get off the ground <laughs> and then and then we'll discover everything else about it. Whoa, it got off the ground in a hurry. So maybe that ground effect is working, which is good because it was very difficult to land it previously and take off too. Interesting sound. I'm trying to figure out where in the throttle the afterburners are. There's afterburner. So Miami as it is in X-Plane 11. Now, you might wonder, well, I mean, there's bound to be a Concorde for Flight Sim coming out. In fact, I know there is a DC Designs Concorde for, X uh, for Flight Sim. And so, why wouldn't we want to fly in that? Well, you might want to, but I already have this one. And frankly, at the Concorde's speed and cruising height, I don't see any good reason let me see we can probably pour on a little bit more here in fact it probably left the afterburner on for a little while but I want to do noise mitigation if you will um, but yeah I mean you're not gonna enjoy the scenery in flight sim anyway so or I'm not going to at these speeds and heights so I might as well have it in here, since I already have it. Okay, now we're past 10,000 feet. The, the co-pilot is saying stuff, but I can't hear the co-pilot. I mean, or whoever's calling announcements and such. 
I think we should trim for flight. Yeah, and the main thing I want to test is landing, really. Because I expect it's probably a little bit better than previously. Everything is looking good. I'll have to check out the startup procedure again some other time. Yeah, in order to see the sights in Flight Sim and go fast, of course, I've gotten the F-15 and F-14 by DC Designs already, so I've already given them money. So, it's nothing against them. Uh, but those are more optimal planes for dipping down and checking out how things look and then going fast again at a higher altitude. Concorde is not that kind of sightseeing plane, I don't think. So, it's fine to have it in here. And frankly, I think the Kolibata Concorde is very nice. It's certainly the nicest I've ever flown in a flight sim. Only thing I need to figure out is how to tweak the shadow settings in X-Plane 11. Because I get this serrated, these serrated shadows sometimes. You can see the shadows on the tail here are fine right now. And the, on the wing, they're not. But when I change the camera, you can see there's a certain distance that leads it to get serrated or smooth. And that just needs to be changed. I just need to figure out how to do that. I do have XP realistic, so it's having me lean. I don't think I would be leaning that much in an airliner, but whatever they say. I think that's probably a thing I can turn off. Whoa, I think we've got some turbulence here. Great. Just as I was gonna pass the speed of sound. Well, let's just punch it. It's a short trip anyway. Does it seem like it's not accelerating quite as much? Hmm. Well, we definitely have afterburners on. Okay. Mach 1. It's interesting, it says we're pitching down. I mean, obviously we're pitching down, but it's, the instantaneous effect on the vertical speed indicator is to go up there and then go down. So that was interesting. M maybe that's something that's realistic to that indicator that I didn't see before. Very much like these afterburner effects over what I currently have in Flight Sim. The autopilot would be a lot easier right now. I'll get it set up. We might as well test it after all. We climbed to 50,000 feet accidentally very fast. <laughs> I can't even turn the autopilot selector fast enough. It's definitely acting a little bit differently than before. Okay, now hopefully things will be smoother. Well, the iPod seems to be doing what I want it to do. Whoa, that bank angle... Well, it could have been more subtle, but... I don't know if there's a bank angle control there. But, it did turn to the right heading. We've been running the afterburners too much. We passed by, right by Cape Canaveral, I was too busy. Oh wait, is that Cape Canaveral? No, that's Cape Canaveral up ahead, okay. So, we, we are not as far north as I thought, okay. Incidentally, uh, if you're not familiar, that 8 minutes and 28 seconds down there under Chrono is the amount of time that we've been on afterburner. And then above that is the elapsed time of the flight, 24 minutes. Well, there's the cape. I think I'll go up to 55,000 feet now. Yep. Photo scenery of the cape, of course.
I trust they don't mind sonic booms around here at least. We will have to pull away from the shore a little bit further on. Okay, I think the whole lean with XP realistic needs to be reduced, perhaps. Natural movements, yes, less natural movement. I wonder about the sound. Let's take a look at my sound settings here. Master is fairly low. I found the copot really soft. So I'm gonna... Go like that and see what happens. Doesn't seem to have changed a whole lot overall. Previously it seemed to accelerate after Mach 1.5 a lot faster even without the and it's not even trying to get to 418 right now I feel like well let me overdo it and see if I can coax it to where I want it to be now it's accelerating if I set it to 430 and then it stops. It's like uh, I have to overdo it a little bit. I don't really want the afterburner, but... Yeah, it sort of stops about 13 knots short of what I set it at. I feel like the relationship between the indicated airspeed and the Mach speed has changed since the previous version. Not 100% sure about that, but... I feel like I was flying at slightly lower indicated airspeed to get to Mach 2 before. Okay, we have reached Mach 2. Well, it's sort of slow in showing that there. Very dramatic change to Mach 2. Flying this without autopilot during around the world in 80 planes is going to be interesting. In the first Around the World in 80 Planes, I didn't have this Concorde yet, so I flew a freeware one. Alright, we are passing right by Wilmington. Uh, that's Wilmington there, I suppose. And we're continuing on. These little bits of North Carolina that jet out are a little bit annoying. We are definitely going to fly over that part, sorry. <laughs> so, I'm not turning for that. Oh, we can see the curvature of the Earth, too. Nice. Reminds me to check on that in Flight Sim, huh? I mean, obviously, we can go around the Earth, but to what extent is it trying to patch together flat bits? And to what extent is it actually curved? Still Mach 2, everything holding very nicely. Of course, we're turning right now. Occasionally I hear the call-out guy speaking, the co-pilot, but can't hear a darn thing that he's saying, so I'm sure it's not all that important. A little bit further off the coast than I've been so far when it comes to these things. But basically pointed at Delaware right now. Yep, I still don't know what the deal is between uh, with the discrepancy between the auto throttle not setting and the actual airspeed. That is peculiar. But there was consistently one. Max landing weight, we're still 2.8 tons heavier than our max landing weight. But we should be able to take care of that in time. And we have DME1, so... Okay. We need to do some work soon. Okay, so we're right on the coast. We probably shouldn't be quite on the coast here, but... Anyway, this is where we are. I see New Jersey up there. We'll turn a little bit further to the east, but we are also going to begin our descent, so... I'll set 45,000 feet and set the vertical speed setting down. 
Well, let me make sure the flight engineer trims for decent. Well, there's New Jersey. And we can see Long Island and uh, Manhattan in the distance there, Staten Island and all too. We gotta be a little bit high up on uh, initially getting over there. But at least we should be below Mach 1 by that time. Oh no, keep acquiring, keep acquiring the altitude. We are below Mach 1. And continuing to descend. 55 nautical miles away from JFK International. Well, let's double check. How's our gross weight? We are now just under the max landing weight. Okay, yeah, we are gonna fly over before attempting a landing. And besides, of course, we want to take a look at New York. I wonder if I still have the buildings around here at Manhattan. Whether I decide to remove those because of lag. We'll see. That's a whole other scenery package. We've got a lot of pitch angle to stay up at this speed. We're at 20, 240 knots right now. Yeah, pitch up 10 degrees. To stay level at 240 knots. Oh, we're getting some lag because it's loading some of the scenery. Oh, I think we're past that. You can certainly see the buildings at Manhattan now. Well, let's see if the autopilot can handle flying a little bit lower. Yep, New York is still laggy with all those buildings. Okay, there's Manhattan as it is in here right now, with a mod added in, of course. Maybe it's just like that, because those look very stockish as far as the buildings are concerned. Some of them look a little bit distinct though. The blue ones are definitely just wrong. <laughs> the big tall blue ones. I mean, I see the Empire State Building there and up there there shouldn't be anything taller than that. Alright. I re vaguely remember having those there before too though. Okay, so that's our Manhattan here. Obviously not uh, not at Microsoft Flight Sim standards, but still. Yep, maybe we'll see some stuff out the window. I can see the Statue of Liberty there in Ellis Island. Yep, just the little bottom end of Manhattan right now. Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Probably looking better here than it does sometimes in Flight Sim, I swear. Okay, we're under 10 tons of fuel. I think that's what my co-pilot just mentioned to me. Okay, time to turn. And tell the flight engineer to trim for landing. Should be slow enough to get the first notch of that down. And I'm gonna turn off all of that. Okay, we need to slow down. Come on. The nose should be causing some drag, darn it. Alright. Landing gear? Okay, there's always a trouble, troublesome part. Okay. Every little bit of nose we can get there. Alright. Feels okay. We'll have to see about this ground effect stuff. Okay. How tall am I? <laughs> oh, I seem to sense some ground effect there. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, I bounced! I did not expect that. 
I diff I don't remember oh gosh. Well, good thing I did this. I did not expect to bounce like that. Um oh that is not reversers. Uh uh the reversers are not engaging the way I thought they would. Oh shucks. Oh no. Oh no. Hmm. Well, we've turned Concord into a boat. Oh, we're going backwards now. Can we still salvage this? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Yeah, the reversers did not engage the way I thought they did. They should. So that's interesting. That's probably not a problem with the model. It's probably a problem with my controls. What? Well, well it, it's it's still good. <laughs> it's still good. I mean, it was. Uh, the problem is before it was very hard to land and. Uh, slower speeds, it did not get much lift at all, so I had to usually land at a higher speed than I expected. This time, uh, clearly, we could have gone with a lower speed than that, which is why it bounced. So, I guess that's the whole ground effect thing, and it's a good thing I practiced a little bit. So I'll be watching out for that during the Around the World in any planes, so that that does not catch me by surprise again. So, yeah, that not the ending I would have preferred, but probably the ending I deserved. So, <laughs> I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.